Contact can be run in one of two modes, standalone or as a plugin. For most of this tutorial, I'm going to be running it in standalone mode so we can focus on how much the program can do on its own before eventually seeing how it can be used in a larger project. As I mentioned before, you can tell that Contact is running in standalone mode when this top toolbar is visible. Let's get started quickly and load an instrument. As you can see, when I switch to the Libraries tab, I have the Contact Factory Library installed, and it has seven instrument groups within it. Double-clicking any one of these, for example Orchestral, I can explore more and more specific instrument types until I find the instrument that I want. I'll pick VSL Strings, and then I'll just drag the Cello Ensemble instrument preset from the browser into the rack. After loading all of its samples and interface, the instrument is instantly ready to play. Make sure the keyboard toggle up here is activated so that you can see how the instrument is mapped to your keyboard. The way that this specific instrument is put together, you can see that all the keys with a darker blue tint have been mapped to actually play notes. I can play as usual and use my sustain pedal to hold on notes. The pink colored keys, when pressed, will change the articulation of the notes played. You can see the different articulation types up here as well, and don't forget that the black keys are also mapped to articulations in this particular instrument. The light blue keys allow you to re-trigger any currently held notes in the articulation style that they represent. The instrument presets in Contact were created with quick and easy setup in mind, so that you can get playing immediately, but still have all the most important controls to affect your sound and playing style at your fingertips. Instruments have an instrument panel, containing controls specific to that instrument, as well as an options panel which deals more with how MIDI notes are interpreted by the instrument, and it's common between all instruments. For example, the dials within the instrument control section will affect how samples actually sound, by manipulating effects and other modules within the instrument. In short, you can think of these as affecting the underlying settings which can be seen by switching to instrument edit mode. We'll come back to all that a bit later. Next, many instruments come with preset effects, with their own controls and categories. For example, with this section, these strings can instantly be placed in different environments by affecting the underlying reverb unit instantly, and more. The Options menu of an instrument, as I said, affects the MIDI notes coming into the instrument before samples are actually played. This means that, for example, transposing the instrument on this panel will not require that the instrument's audio signal be pitched up, but instead the MIDI note that you press, let's say the E3 key, is interpreted as an F3 key, when transposed up by one semitone. We'll cover all the details of instruments in greater detail a bit later. Next, let's minimize the cello's instrument by clicking on its logo, and let's load another instrument. This time, let's head over to the database view. Rather than listing instruments strictly by categories, the database view lets you search for them in several different ways. For example, just having the instrument category selected 
I get a full list of the instrument types on the left here, followed by specific instruments, and I can still search by instrument banks. Keep an eye on this section in the middle here. It displays the search result list along with the number of results. With no categories selected above, I'm given the full list of over a thousand contact instruments. I could drag any of these, for example this trombone, into the rack instantly to load it. Notice now, however, that when I play my keyboard, both instruments play out. This is because I have them both set to Omni mode, which will receive any MIDI note data on any MIDI channel and play it. I can, of course, use either the mute or solo buttons over here to just hear one of the instruments at a time. The solo buttons are especially useful when you just want to hear one instrument out of a large group in the rack. And the mute buttons are often most handy to take out just one or a few instruments from the mix. Also note that the instrument navigator down here also provides a pair of mute and solo buttons for every instrument in the rack. If you don't see the instrument navigator, toggle it on up here. With these two instruments playing together though, you can already get an idea of how easily an orchestral sound, for example, can be made. I think this session could really use a timpani to fill out the bottom end and give it more character. Rather than trying to find it amidst the categories above, I can simply type the word timpani into the search field, here, to instantly get a list of them. Even as I type, contact begins to filter away at the thousand plus list of instruments and came up with seven timpanis for me to try. Let's try out timpani rolls. That sounds pretty good. I'll reduce the volume of the cellos. These timpanis are rolling and sustaining, which sounds nice, but that also gets in the way of the cello sound a bit. To delete the timpani rolls instrument from my rack, I'll just select it down here and hit the delete key. Let's try out the timpani hits preset instead. There, I like that better. The timpani gives it some initial impact, but then gives way to the strings which I want to take center stage. Just a few more quick notes on loading and playing in contact. You can imagine a contact session becoming very large as these racks begin to fill up to all their 16 slots. So to get right to the instrument you want, just click once on the instrument's name in the instrument navigator, and it will scroll into view. And lastly, a few notes about the dial controls in contact. Once you've loaded and played an instrument, and tweaked some of its parameters, you may want to quickly reset one of its dials back to the default value. You can reset a dial to its default value by holding control and clicking on it. As you've already seen, to change a knob value, click on it and drag your mouse upwards to move the knob clockwise, or downwards to move it counterclockwise. Also, some knobs can be adjusted more finely if you hold down the shift key on your keyboard while moving the knob. Now that you know how to get playing quickly, stay tuned for a run through of the options menu to get everything running smoothly. Thank you.